Welcome to the channel. Today we'll be talking with Justin from Amps and Sound. And Justin, as well, obviously everyone should know who you are, but I'll let you jump in from there and we'll continue our conversation about uh, Axpona. And but before that, well, so everybody, hey, I'm Justin uh, from Amps and Sound. Uh, I got asked recently an interesting question that goes like, what do you do? And at this point, I think the best way I help people is I'm a professional pot stirrer. So I help people with mental health needs and I help people with substance abuse needs. But I can't say that that I can't make drug analogies to make my point. It's a little insensitive. But um, I like to stay cosmically busy. And so on one hand, I do mental health full time for the state of California and I help run a drug rehab. And I do private practice and I work in the hospital, but to stay sane, I build things in the middle of the night, like a Keebler elf. A fairly uh, large Keebler. A fairly <laughs> large Keebler elf. Uh, which is, you know, me and my three three assistant bakers uh, produce all of Amps and Sounds wares. And we do about 150 amps a year. And now we do uh, eight pairs of speakers a year about. That's, that's impressive. Your speakers are dope. That's like the downside about the speakers, though, is I have to make them. I'm the guy making them 100. percent So they're they're more involved. They're more they're more physical labor for me. But they're they're like proper works of art, though, man. Like I because I have a, one of your sets, as mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure people know, but like so, and that's like you keep asking me, don't ever sell those. And I'm like, oh, dude, those aren't going anywhere. <laughs> but like those, yeah, those are my favorite speakers, bar none. As of, I mean, every time I go anywhere to like any audio shop or that kind of thing, I, it, it's like, eh, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's hard to to walk away from those and be like, oh yeah, these are better. Or like, I, and then the polish that you do on them, like the way you build the cabinets, the paintwork, the, everything is just. I love that you do the bolts too. The bolts are like, well, so that kind of came about like. For, even for the fasteners for the amplifiers, the, they they go up in size until I stop breaking things, and then it's the right size. <laughs> um, and when you're tuning a speaker and you are opening a cabinet multiple times because you're trying to get a final tune, screws lose their tension over some period of time. Bolts mm -hmm. don't. Bigger bolts don't break. And they just oh, look cheap. Nice. Cute. Yep. All, I mean, the facet, you know, there's there's a cheaper place to get hardware, but the hardware I get it from is a place called McMaster Car. And McMaster Car has turned buying bolts into the equivalent of like a crack dealer. Like you can buy, you can buy hundreds of dollars of bolts in like 45 seconds. It is. Sorry. I, just, it is, I just imagine you go with somebody in there like, oh man, you seen that bolt at McMaster Car? <laughs> no. So like, Download their app as a point of fact. I'll give you like 20 bucks. I'll reimburse you, but like download their don't spit. <laughs> Talk about that. I gotta swallow. Uh, Dr. Pepper everywhere. Oh, damn it. When do you know the joke hit right? <laughs> no, but I'll give, download the app called McMaster Car and like decide you're going to buy like, I don't know, a Hubble outlet for your wall or okay. some bolts, right? And look at how, like, after the first one, you'll pre-program with, like, your ship to address and all this stuff. You can go from picking the item out in the search field to fully transacting in, like, less than 20 seconds. Oh, dang. Right. Like, they make that, like, just stupid fast. Well, you got to get it that. Is... You got to get that itch. You got to, you know, people want their bolts, man. They want it now. I mean, actually, if you, like, talk to car builders, I'll tell you, like, McMaster Car is... Sometimes twice, if not three times more expensive, but everybody uses them because they're absolutely the fastest shipping. Oh, well, they have everything in stock. Well, and it, well, there's a reason. Like it's a supply and demand factor, right? So high demand, high supply. They can you're paying for a service as much as you are for the materials, right? Well, I mean, like, why do we use Grubhub or Amazon? Like, how much? Like, Amazon is like let's cut Amazon's bad damage. Yeah, let's yeah. want that now. Yeah, I just did that uh, yesterday. I was like, oh, I need a new SD because I'm getting ready for a trip, and I was like, oh, I need a new SD card or for like a backup. And I was like, uh, I should just order it. And it was like literally, just, I woke up this morning and it was already at my front door. <laughs> I needed I needed a new webcam to because I'm doing like telehealth, and like the one I had works okay, but like the color was a little off. Mm -hmm. The one I got didn't have 
didn't have a tripod mount, and then I bought a tripod mount with a big gooseneck. Oh, yeah. So they got me for a new they got me for a new camera and a gooseneck tripod mount. What people usually that little that little screen right below as you scroll down to go by, there's that little part that says people usually buy this with this, and it's like, would you like to add all three? <laughs> yes. Why? Why? Yes. Yes, that does sound like a plan. Yeah. <laughs> But like the ability to, to literally buy hundreds of dollars of things in like 20, 30 seconds. Not even thinking, just like spur of the moment. Yeah. Well, those those speakers will have like hundreds of dollars of bolts in them, is the yeah. thing. Cause like all the woofers and the back panel, everything's actually fastened with the same size. Um, it's a quarter inch, 20 pit, tw- quarter inch diameter, 20 pitch on the thread. Mm-hmm. And so the whole thing, the woofers are put in with quarter inch 20s. Everything's bolted with quarter twenties. I mean, um, it's a work of art. I mean, well, okay, well, go to Justin's website and go look at any of his pictures of his amps. And if you look at the inside, the nakedness, the naked, the nude photos, not safe for work, but uh <laughs> and that will tell you how pristine and nice the inside of the speaker is. It's bananas. Like it's the same philosophy, I'm assuming, that Justin yep. you have with so I mean it's just. Everything is like in its place. Everything is perfectly like aligned. It's just fantastic. well, like you know, no wire should go more than like four inches without hitting another s- support. Everything's pinned. Mm-hmm. You can yeah, I mean with the drivers with removing the wire loom. Dude, it's, yeah. it, dude, it's a serious piece of work, man. Like it's it's mm-hmm. beautiful, man. And and what's that? What's that called? The uh, uh, not. It's like it's the art of uh, not minimalism, but I mean it is minimalist. But like the art of like industry, like industry art, like it's like a, or you know, there's just there's an artistry to it. It's, it's pretty. If you're into that kind of, which I do, I like I like always like one of my favorite things in the world is like when uh, they have like demo amps or demo products that have like the clear see through where you can see the internals, and it's like if, if they're done well, like you know, it, it just I think it's like it art and beauty beautiful thing. i almost prefer that a lot of times but anyways we're getting off track a little bit uh, as as we do um, yep uh but uh wanted to do some general catch up with you we, we kind of were discussing um your upcoming stuff you, you're going to axpona i'm just gonna do a quick like overview of what we were going to talk about um and then we can all, we'll obviously diverge and we, we for sure we will probably go ADHD on a bunch of this stuff, but uh, general audio catch up, which we kind of already started. Uh, then we're going to talk about some Axpona stuff down the road, maybe some new products, what you're, you're that kind of thing. Um, but also not just your stuff, but like other things that you're interested in and and whatnot. So. Well, one of the things I think like we like to talk about and riff about is like things that we are interested in as audio files, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or as hi-fi enthusiasts and yeah you know, I, I make a lot of gear and i make a lot of gear that like answers my own questions but like i still love i love good gear good design and i love things that have intangibles and so like we always talk about that so like i i, I have three interesting examples only one of them is for me um one it's it's like a you know something blue something borrowed something old <laughs> something heavy something heavy and something heavier yeah <laughs> yes no, the, yeah two of them are two of them are stupidly heavy I mean, only one of them's mine <laughs> we're gonna see he just throws back out for not careful here but uh yeah like i think that that's i agree like i think the intangibles especially is something that a lot of people miss out on or not miss out on but don't talk about enough like the mm-hmm the the soul i always call it the soul of a thing or like the the art of a thing that kind of deal but those those are what will grab me it's kind of like um that's a bad analogy but like you don't know what you like until you see it you know what i mean like mm-hmm. so for instance like if you were there's an analogy for it but i don't want to get like canceled but like for girls or boys right you go to a bar the first thing you see is if you're a men or men we don't play with boys this is not non-boy <laughs> I'm trying to be PC, just but like you're gonna see someone and you're gonna think they're attractive. There's an intangible, there's a tangible, intangible thing there. And it might not necessarily be because of their full beauty, it might be their character, like just how they're interacting with others. You're gonna have this, like you're gonna be drawn to certain people and not to others, right? And, and that can be for making friends, making you know connections. But th- that's my what I'm trying to get at, and that's the piece that you can't really put a finger on because it's unique to each individual as well, right? So 
but that I get heavily with my gear. Like, you know, there's something very special about going to like, if anyone that's been to can jam, they sit down at your table and they can like sit in front of this giant red October or like, you know, and be able to like turn the knob and feel the heat off of it and the visuals and the, the, the feel there's something there that when you put it all together, it's just like, you know, no, for, for sure. For sure. And I mean, I think that like, you and I both have some interesting ideas of, of stuff that's new to us that maybe it's not new, like maybe other people haven't found before. Mm-hmm. And let's share it, you know? Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, nothing really crazy with me, uh, but actually, actually here, like, um, I mean, wait, how, wait, do you not have the uh, Iconic yet? Hmm? The Icon? Mm-hmm. Iconic? Iconic? You don't have his new... Uh-uh. Zach's uh, no, he's you know, the return of the icon. No, he's been super busy, man. So I Dude, just have, I, don't, I was like this close last night to buying. So the two headphones are like I need to return to is like the icon and then an uh-huh. ether two. And I was like, they're both in the cart. Like I was so like I was like I was gonna pause and talk to Tyler first. <laughs> I was so close to buying like headphones last night. He he did just put out the uh which is really dope, the Boca. So it's the new closed back portable. And he Dude, has the case the for that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, what's what's the goddamn zipper? The zipper, the, the close up of the zipper. I was, I was like, like, oh, oh I, I want that. Give me because he has the detail. So he, it says VMF <laughs> on the zipper, like on, on the metal tab for the, the zipper. zipper. Yeah. And it's like, and the zipper has this nice, like, like bronzed look to it, too. And I was just like, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> Hundred percent. Like, I mean, the headphones look great, but I was more taken <laughs> by the case. That goes back to that whole like, there's that intangible thing, right? We're all saying like, there's certain things you'll just be like, oh, oh, I need that, or oh, that's that's nice. Like, I want, you know. Um, mm-hmm. For example, is uh, my buddy Chris from Grumpy Goose. Uh, okay. Yep. Yep. Chris, yep. So he randomly sent me this thing. It was a while back, but it's like I have it in a couple of videos. But it's like this, like. If I can get this to focus here, but like, it's this random, like, I don't think Chris told you really what that was for, Taylor. I don't want to know, man. <laughs> but I asked him, I was like, my like, eye, right, bro, this thing's gorgeous. Like, this is, I mean, it's, it is beautiful. Like the wood that he has here and like the, it's, it's. Everybody exactly. tell Tyler what that's for. <laughs> <laughs> I grabbed the wrong thing. I should have grabbed a skit stand, but it's too far away. I'm like <laughs> trying to use the force to bring it to me. Like, so crazy. I asked him, I was like, what the hell is this thing? I mean, and I was like, I was like, he's like, what do you think it is? So I was like, <sighs> Tyler, why does it flip down before it gets put at the base? <laughs> it has nice little cushions on the bottom for the feet. Like, um, but he was like, <laughs> so we were joking. He was like, oh, it's like, he's like, I just had some extra wood and I just put put it together <laughs> and i did this is a fun thing and it's and it's nice i like holding it it's a fun it's a car you like like oh, no. thought of you and it's you because <laughs> extra wood the piece that was inspired to be an extra wood you yeah, extra wood. <laughs> thanks chris love you man <laughs> let's see if, if i can get can give us if anybody can give power of stick cartoon on that have you seen those uh, on Instagram now? They have these stick cartoons and they'll explain yeah. things to people. Yeah, yeah. they're hilarious. Oh, dude, I think I just broke my uh, my Zoom <laughs> by doing this stupid. Let me turn off my video, turn it back on. <laughs> oh. uh, there oh, we go. Fucking hilarious. Oh. <laughs> so, like, the uh, yeah, so this thing was like, it's a cool, random, it's just well crafted. It's just this, he just, it, but we were joking because like, it's this audio diffuser. Like it's an audio diffuser device. It it diffuses the audio in the in the room. Do you, do you want an alternate explanation? No. <laughs> I want to maintain my innocence. It starts with a D <laughs> and ends with a, a O. <laughs> no, an R. It's an R. R. Okay. There. I, I still words with friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, in the comments tell Tyler your thoughts 
beautiful piece of wood, man. It's uh, hard. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once again, like I said, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go off track probably. <laughs> but, uh, um, <laughs> but that's the intangible, right? Like I also have a, another buddy. So uh, you know, um, he does like the puck strap. He did he did my mm-hmm. case for the. You can kind of see it back there. It's the uh, yeah, the whammy case and has the mm-hmm. wood. And he, I got a couple of his headphone stands too, which are in my photos recently. And those things are another beautiful thing. And like the difference between his and Chris's stands are, um, they're both very well made. But like Chris, I mean, it's a Chris is on like another level of like, because his are all hand like carved, hand like Paul. You know what I mean? Like not that the the uh, midwinter ones are not that as well, but like there's, there's just another level up, you know what I mean? Like they're both fantastic, but the effort that Chris puts into his headphone stands is just let me see your whammy case. I didn't see how it came out. Oh yeah. One second. Excuse the, the sweatpants. Cause I'm being sweaty. That's awesome. The sweatpants actually make it better. Plug this thing. The, the, I've actually been listening to it. So do you have Crocs on? Please tell me you have Crocs. Do your Crocs have lights in the top? You didn't hear me. Ugh. Oh, that is that is actually that's really beautiful. That yeah, I want that. Can I have it? <laughs> so the, no, I'd be like no, legitimate. That, that's it was beautiful. Expensive. It's very beautiful. <laughs> and so and like he hand milled the, or didn't hand mill, but he did all the the milling uh-huh. on the on all this stuff, and he actually put I asked him to put a little purple LED in that. So it actually changes color too. So there's like a ring of LEDs. So as you turn the dial, it will change color depending on how loud it gets. And then I had on the back, you can actually have it be a preamp, so you can switch from headphone to preamp mode. So and it's just a it's just a whammy build, and you just, the case is just unique. So, so long ago though, as a, as an aside, um, I built a pre based off of super simple pre so it's a um, right out of the nec op amp manual so anybody who wants to look up super simple pre mm-hmm. look it up super good very good sounding to build very easy to build but what i did with the volume pot is i got an old um there's a company called general genrad right general radio and they used to build a lot of really important equipment uh used in the audio and industrial applications when they had these big bakelite knobs huge bakelite knobs dude knobs are the way <laughs> and your video's frozen again but <laughs> there you go so it was a knob bigger than what you had but it was like like that and what was so bigger than my knob i don't know justin <laughs> but what was so nice about it is that you could take one finger and just <laughs> I just roll it across, and it was so sensitive as I rolled it. It just would change the volume. It just exploded. I don't know. It was so crazy. <laughs> the volume just went crazy. Isn't that why you like your your pre your, your whammy? Is that it has such a big. It does knob. have a beautiful knob, man. It's true. <laughs> I can't really speak on it, but it, he actually built this knob for my other buddy, and it's an actual like. And it's a metal well it's hilarious but yeah um yeah like there's like i mean but that's what i'm saying like that's so cool like craftsmen right like there's crafts people that can just make some just amazing things that are as an aside though real quick though don't you find though like having that huge ass knob actually makes like micro adjustments while you're playing music you, you just kind of like yeah you want to use it because it's just ever so very gentle movements actually yeah. move it or you can do like, but even then, like it's so smooth and it, yeah, like it's oh, yeah, fantastic. I'm, Those kinds of things actually matter. Like they're they're, they're things that I'm just matter. gonna sit here like the rest of the, sh- the show, and we're just gonna. <laughs> you know, you should have a. You could do a whole like only for only fans. Be no, I'm sitting there with a with a knob and just. Mm-hmm. No, when you were actually doing it, you had a different look. Your expression was slightly more centered. Yeah. You're in the moment. The the new amp from the crazy amp builder guys. It was at Can Jam New York. Uh, the one that's like the half mannequin. The mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that was a that was inspired. Yeah, inspired. Yes. <laughs> Actually, you know what's funny is I've always loved their first one, which was the skull. 
Uh -huh. Like I love, I want one of those so bad because it's so. I mean, I love. I mean, you can. I love school. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like school things, but like, um, yeah, that thing is dope. But I, it's it's impossible to get, and it's stupid expensive. Well, the next. Year. Well, so I'll tell you. So back to audio catch up. I'm gonna. I'll just start us off. Mm -hmm. So we actually, everybody. Not that you. Not that I don't want you to hear the first 34 minutes of us talking, but you a whole separate, whole separate video. <laughs> Justin and I talk poo. Yay. <laughs> and you know what's funny? There's no alcohol involved. No, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm drinking Dr. Pepper <laughs> and water, man. Like I <laughs> Crystal Light. <laughs> nice tea. Zero. Dr. Pepper Zero. So uh, you know, gotta watch that girlish figure. <laughs> oh, you, you know that I lost 70 I pounds. I didn't know it, man. You look fantastic. Believe me. Lies. <laughs> um, no, I mean I'll share with anybody who wants to know. It's you know intermittent fasting, Atkins diet, um, Ozempic, mm -hmm. and sometimes a medicine called uh, Qsimia, which is like a toned down version of Ventramine plus Topanary. Yeah. If you ever need to know pharmacokinetics, me and pharmacokinetics like know each other. <laughs> we talk to you about meds. Fair, fair. Yeah, I mean like. Uh... Yeah, man, you it's crazy. The because I saw you at Canjam SoCal, and that was the first time I'd seen mm -hmm. you since you'd lost the majority of the weight. And I was like, Holy smokes, man, you look fantastic. Um, Thanks, yeah, like it's still uh, keeping it off. I've been able to keep it off, which is a good thing. Yeah, it's and well, it's, so that's the biggest one, man. Is uh, for me, like I'm horrible at diet, like I have god awful diets, but I work out like five days a week and I do intermittent fasting, so but. I eat like crap, but it's catching up because you can't, you can't out work out a bad diet. So, <laughs> well, I mean, that's what, so Andy Regan, did you see Andy, Dan Clark, Andy? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen him. Andy's, yeah. Andy's lost like 60 or 80 pounds. Oh, wow. He, 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 he and I sat down and talked. He saw me, he asked, mm -hmm. did the same plan. And the, the advice I said to Andy, which for me at least has been true is it's not how hard you work out because like i work out a, a fair amount i coach volleyball mm -hmm. for my daughter 10 hours a week you know and i'm like playing with them and stuff like that it's um, for me like 95 percent of it is what you put in your mouth it's true um and so like you have to eat less and le eat less often mm -hmm. and that's you know i have medicine that helps me with that but like that's that's the true thing. That's a great thing, man. <laughs> well, I went from 307 to 234. That's not bad, man. That's real good. Yeah, so, all right. So, the audio nonsense. Let's talk audio nonsense for a second, guys. So, long story short, um, Xpone is coming. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about a whole bunch of cool things that are, are, have nothing to do with me, but I hadn't realized just how much stuff I had been building that I've been sort of holding off and sharing. So I'm going to highlight a few of them. Um, and then we're going to talk about a whole bunch of cool stuff. But like probably the biggest thing is I need a name for a new amp. The new amp is either needs to be called like Enterprise, Death Star. <laughs> um, Some Red, October, <laughs> Red October XL. Oh. Huh? Um, you know... Uh, if we're going for boats or nautical, because so I have a speaker coming out called the Kraken. Ooh, nice. And I have a speaker coming out called Sasquatch. Both uh, um, in my wheelhouse. I like this. 18 inch <laughs> woofers. Ooh. Um, so I can't use Kraken. I can't use Sasquatch. Okay. Right. So those are taken, unfortunately. Um, but essentially, here, here's what happened is that. Um, I've used the uh, same transformer winder for almost 20 years at this point. Mm -hmm. And he, he's been retired for a while, but he still winds for me occasionally. And he, he designs all of my uh, intellectual property. And so um, I don't, I, I wanted to have a final generation of output transformers designed by him because you never know. This is, you know, COVID, Zach, Zach and I's collaboration during COVID wore his hands out. Mm -hmm. Got tired and told me he's, he's done. Or would be done. Um, 
And so for the better part of a year and a half, two years, we've been working on an output transform uh, development cycle. Okay. And so the, the Red October and the Nautilus use very similar output transformers of the same size. There's there's a one or two internal differences in the genes, but they are essentially 21 output transformers for simply you know, mm -hmm. eight to 10 watts, you know, but um, Nautiluses can do more than what people know that they can do. You should do that for yourself. Lick your fingers and stand in water while you do it. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, just I, I can tell you that they run bigger tubes than, you know, but you have to have the head, headphone. Like people will try to use ginormous tubes. The biggest tube, like KT-170s as an example, with 98 dB efficient uh 300 ohm headphones and they're like why is it not absolutely dead silent with the 10 watts that i'm putting on it at this exact moment silent. so <laughs> if, if one needs a bigger you know headphone you know like if you're using a saspara or you know a stealth um that wants big power Mix or so, like something that just sucks up power like no then big 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 you know, big tubes make sense. So that's like the Nautilus is, you know, so these are 20 watt output transformers. And as an output transformer goes, they're, they're like that. Yeah, and they have fairly big hands. Um, and the Red Octobers are the exact same size. They just a different primary impedance, slightly more um, optimized for the 300B. So the Gen 4 output transformer is a 30 watt output transformer, which makes, which is more like that. Okay. So, um, like, it's the difference between a softball versus a miniature basketball that you can play in like the office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, like the, 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 at the carnival, you throw them at the. the... You know, like the ones like the, the yeah. basket, like, you know, like. Yeah, I don't know. Like, the the ball ones. Yeah. yeah. So, like the two. No, not like this. Not like this. I mean, not like this. Like, it's yeah. larger than a big softball. Right. So, the, the goal was always not to make it for more power. Because it, it it's a thirty watt core. Mm -hmm. um, the goal is to make it to use the space inside the transformer for like more interleaving. And interleaving allows each winding to be more interconnected, more interconnected, greater frequency extension, tonal depth. Lots of good, not, not much bad. Um, I didn't think anything about size. You know, if, you know, if you order, it's like ordering like fugu. Like, oh, of course, I want fugu. Bring me fugu. And then they go, you know, here's the waiver before you eat the fugu. You know, <laughs> if, you, if you die, it's not our fault. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, you bring me the food. So, you know, no, it's like doing a hard stop when you get the waiver. It's like, so the Transformers came and was like, oh, that 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 may not fit. That's that's, 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 that's bigger. That's like, that's like a lot bigger. And so, um, how do you optimize for that? And so the chassis got thicker. And bigger, bigger um, and few, a few layout bigger. options, and and the power supply got a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. and so we have the XL. And I'm going to lift it up in a second. And um, Tyler was laughing at me a moment ago, few, about thirty minutes ago, because we have two things to show you that are like stupidly heavy. I mean, and I'm just wait for you to be like, well, it's just going to be so heavy. <laughs> so th this is sort of like showing. Um, Pretending that my four-month-old child is not a four-year-old child, kind of size difference. I'd say more like four-month-old to ten-year-old, but sure, yeah. So uh, most people know, like a red October. A red October is like seventeen and a half inches wide. This is now nineteen inches wide. The red October totally came in at what, like 50, 60 pounds, right? Yeah, this is like seventy-five pounds. So the chassis is thicker. <laughs> Transformers are a lot heavier. Um, you know, some good good stuff, but I'll, I'll show it to you. And um, the first unit has been built and is ready for CanJam SoCal. And I plan to build one or two more before then. So mm -hmm. I'll show you guys what it what it looks like. Uh, next is I build big amps, and I think that they're, you know, I like big butts, I can't lie. I, I like big amps. I tend to, like, as long as those fit as, fits on a rack, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that they're theft-proof. I mean. No, yeah, 
Um, well, I mean, I, actually, what I would say, like, and I didn't think about is like, like, it, like my pre is effing ginormous and heavy. Um, in a world where people change out equipment at a really, really, really high clip, having equipment that's so heavy that's uncomfortable to change and it makes you slightly more comfortable in like your decision doesn't actually bother me. Um, because I, I do like the idea of someone owning it for um, long periods of time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that it kind of lends itself to that idea because there's so many good like speaker choices that work with these amps. Um, so there's that idea, but I wanted to design something that was more power. Like I'm, I'm almost always a decidedly single ended guy. Mm -hmm. In my two channel lineup, I build these big, powerful, really bespoke mono blocks and they're expensive. And I wanted to find something that was like moderate power while still being really interesting in its form. So I used to make, make an amp called the Stereo 15, 15 watt push pull EL84s into 12AX7 and like an ECC99 or 12BH7 or 12AE7. Fantastically good, good, uh, really reliable amp, good frequency extension. So I decided I wanted to put it onto a metal chassis because I think the metal chassis is, um, especially with the tube cages that I've been doing lately, really have a high value proposition for people. Um, and so at Expona, I've sold my soul to the devil to get this done in time. Um, I'm doing my own room, which is the first time everybody's going to get to see like my idea of speakers, my idea of amplification, my idea of a pre. Uh, so you get to hear like the sound. sound. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, room 550 uh, at Axpona and SME su supplying a table and a relic supplying a DAC and uh, Kat from SME is going to be spinning vinyl with us. And uh, it's going to be really, really amazing, really interesting, unique cuts with stories behind them about nice. the mixing process and what we have really custom step up transformers because I the transformer guy I got into building custom step up transformers. So we have custom step ups for the moving coil cartridges. Mm -hmm. Um and so it's gonna be a really nice um one hopes taste of my frame of reference when it comes to sound. All of that said though, so we have um my big pre first mm -hmm. thing I ever made with a remote is gonna be there. Uh, <laughs> and then we're gonna have the black pearl three heavy stereo amp things on this Hudson speakers, which are three way horn loaded speakers that are so you're, you're bringing really, your, all your whole setup. And we are, um, but I have a Chiquito. I have a little, 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 little Nina, um, coming called the stereo 15 and stereo 15 is only 14 inches wide, uh, 10 inches deep and six inches tall only. That's like, oh, like <laughs> I mean, I mean, that, yeah. <laughs> compared to the XL, you yeah. can almost get like three three of them in, in the size of an XL. XL yeah. No, no, so, that's, a, that's I, a good size. I, I was just giving you <laughs> um, Price is a little um, work in progress because we're still building up the metal to understand it better, but it's at powder coating. Mm -hmm. It's going to be um, in this fantastic custom orange I had them make for me, uh, orange mm -hmm. and black. So it's going to look like a pumpkin. Nice. Um, but I will tell linking this back to everybody. So my spirit animal when it comes to audio is an amp called the Dynaco ST35. Mm -hmm. My my stereo 15 is my modern take on the Dynaco ST35. So the Dynaco ST35 was called the poor man's Macintosh 275. Okay. So you know, if somebody wasn't was working class and couldn't afford uh, a Mac 275 that could always afford a Dynaco ST35. And so I have it here. I actually, there, there's a company called Dynakit Parts mm -hmm. and they sell kits to, to build these 100% new parts that will look exactly like the original. Um, there's, they're almost always out of stock. So you have to email them and like, get on a list or you can buy one used on eBay for like between $350 and $1,000 depending on like degree of restoration gotcha i love it because if you guys have ever seen like a 1950s bread box or a loaf of bread yeah mm -hmm. the st35 is basically looks like a, a bread box so this is the st35 oh nice that is pretty dope looking yeah. i like that with the cage and stuff yeah 
That's not right. And it's two T two L two EL eighty fours and a twelve WD seven, which is kind of unusual too. Mm -hmm. But if you guys can see, it's got transformers in there. Oh yeah, cage. It's got no modern ergonomics. So if you see, it's got screw down connectors for the speakers. Total pain in the ass. It's got a power switch that's on a on on the cord, <laughs> right? And then yeah, it's got go the RCA's. The RCAs in the front. Well, this goes back to like 1950s. I was gonna say, yeah, the times. You have to go with the times. But you know, if you want really good sound, really, 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 really exceptionally good sound, buying one of these used off of eBay and buying like a set of Tenoys or buying a set of Lothers, because mm -hmm. Lothers come back out into the market, or buying like if you go to Mata Sound and getting the full range driver kit. From Madison, where it's like a Fostex driver in a horn-loaded enclosure, mm -hmm. they they make these kits that are like stacked MDF, like MDF, and they like glue it all together, and it makes a horn-loaded cabinet that's actually pretty complicated. And they give you the driver; it's like five hundred dollars for the for a, a six-inch Fostex in right. a complicated yeah. cabinet. <laughs> and this, that's some magic right there. This is like real, real, real accessible magic. And I know that like there's always a lot of talking about like. Hi-Fi is super expensive. Not everybody can afford it. No one fucking, no one understands. Uh, I think I said it, but didn't say it, but no one understands um, how to make things accessible. Mm -hmm. This is something that, you know, people are still using 50 years later. And if you want to hear like what real good sound will sound like, and it's not going to be um, audio file sound, it's going to be hi-fi sound. Mm -hmm. So it's Where's not for... per not for perception but for enjoyment mm -hmm. this is something that's incredibly hard to beat super compelling super reliable and uses power tubes you could retube this thing all day long for 100 bucks in total not bad so this is my spirit animal when designing things <laughs> there you go so that well there you go there's there's uh some of the ideas behind the house sound of of amps and sound then right so to some level for sure. So I am going to have a static display in my in my space of my version of the Dynaco ST35, and then like my entry level pre to mm -hmm. show people because uh, the pre is also pretty small; it's like eight inches wide, mm. um, and to kind of give people just an idea. And you know, having a removable tube cage that you can actually like no one can, kids won't get their hand fingers burned or cats won't jump on it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're really, I'm excited by both of those ideas, bringing a black pearl for public consumption and then showing our newest amp that won't even have a price yet. It'll just sort of like, this is what we just got done. Literally, I had to, I had to pay quadruple the price for metal to get it done in time. Oh, geez, Louise. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, going back to what you were talking about a little bit before about some ideas for like naming conventions you said bigger better stronger and the first thing i thought of mine was that 80s show the million dollar man <laughs> uh, 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 uh. hi little love <laughs> what are you doing i'm on a phone call video go on wait everybody should pay attention tyler's got a ninja turtle in the corner i just noticed the ninja turtle yeah it's my biggest bigger than my daughter is that donatello <laughs> that's leonardo Leonardo, okay. uh, a little bit taller. All right, love. Thank you, honey. I love you. Can you shut the? Don't you shut that off? <laughs> shut the door. I love you. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> terrorist. <laughs> Domestic terrorist. Seriously, in my house. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, so I'll show you guys what the what the red. Uh, so I need a name for this amp. Mm -hmm. That's the XL. So right now we're calling it like the October XL or the Red October XL. Um, it's what steroids do to you know when steroids go wrong. What was the version of the Hulk that like took steroids and he like got all like uh, I can't gray remember. abomination or gray Hulk? Gray Hulk. Yeah, yeah, abomination, abomination. Yes, yeah. Because yeah. abomination was his arch villain, but it was because he when he got radiated, he was like he got massive. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's see if I can pick it up without losing something. Like a disc. <laughs> I was gonna say this thing's there. Oof. Yeah, look at that beast. So if you guys see this is 
Yes, I'm struggling a little while I do it. <laughs> well, yeah, it's 75 pounds, man. It's a giant kettlebell. That thing is massive. Let's not let's not drop it. You see, like this is like so. Hopefully, if you guys see sort of proportions, Mm -hmm. and well, and Justin's not a little guy, like at all. (laughs) And so, I was gonna say, like, it's you brought up that one thing where it's like the solidity or solidity the the weight of it, right? It's so big that it makes people actually compels them to want to hold on to it longer. It's it's a funny story I have because when I got your speakers in, I think I've told you this before, I put them in. Uh, but I put them in the house before my wife got home and I had to like, I was like, I was like manhandling these giant speakers and I got them in the house and she comes home like a couple hours later and I'm just sweating on the couch. Just like, oh, I just freaking haul the ass, get them off the pallet and get them un- unwrapped and like manhandled like by myself into these. And, uh, and she goes upstairs, she comes back downstairs. She's looking around. She goes, does it in the kitchen thing for a little bit. And then she comes back out she's looking around. She starts to go upstairs. She comes back. She goes, what are those? <laughs> like it took her a while to figure out like what was amiss. Cause I had like redone everything. Like I made it look like they've been there forever. And I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, Justin sent me these speakers. <laughs> and then I was like, if you can move them, I'll get rid of them. <laughs> She's like, I can fit inside of these. No, why, why am I going to move these? I was like, yeah, I guess they're staying then. <laughs> So I've gotten better with my, I mean, I I think I'm good with my packing, but like what Tyler got was it looked like I could um, send cocaine from, from Nicaragua. (laughs) Yeah. The, the, the foam, the styrofoam with like the silver shit. Yeah. (laughs) Right. So uh, you you use um, uh, the styrofoam, polyethylene foam around the speakers Mm -hmm. so that nothing gets embossed in the, into the, into the lacquer Mm -hmm. and then it gets foam around it. And then you use uh, stretch wrap, mm-hmm. tighten it and tighten it and tighten it so it closes on itself. And then you put other layers around it. And then you put uh, um, like come along straps so it doesn't teeter. Mm-hmm. And then you put more wrap around it to make it tighter again. So it looks like a ball, like a, a rubber band ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was a beast, man. <laughs> By the way, if anybody ever wants to do this as a party favor, have you guys ever seen where they take rubber bands and they put it around the watermelon? Oh, yeah, and then <laughs> the explosion. <laughs> I think we should do that at Can Jam, though, like as a team building exercise. Can you imagine if like, everybody, like, here's your rubber band. Everyone gets a rubber band as they walk in. And they have the end, and the white person explodes because they have Yeah, there you go. I was gonna say, everyone gets, and whoever gets the last band that, that actually breaks whatever you're breaking, <laughs> you win. <laughs> that would be pretty good. <laughs> anyway, Marketing uh, ideas. There, you, well, yeah, there you go. That's actually a good one. That's pretty. That'd be a fun interactive, like the whole like thing too. Um, but yeah, man. Like I was gonna say, like so that that the. The Red October XL is the kind of the temporary name for now, right? Like it's, but I mean, I think there's there's something to be said about like the Stereo 15 because it harkens back to me building the Stereo 15, so it's very similar to the original circuit. Mm-hmm. A, lot, a lot of changes, but a lot of similarities. The Red October XL, it really is very much like a Red October, but with you know the investment of transformers mm-hmm. really putting the putting in our very very best transformers that exist at this point. Okay. And there's only two amps that have the Gen 4 transformers, which is the 300B monoblocks, which people don't know about, that are in my listening space for me. I was just say, if you've seen any of your, your more recent videos on Instagram, you, you, you'd see them. <laughs> right. Um, and, then the, and then the XL. And so these are the only two things, that, the latest, greatest generation of transformers. And I being the guy who believes transformers can make a difference and invested in them. Mm-hmm. They are they are so much more expensive though. And they weigh so much more, but like neither here nor there. All right. So that was one thing. Um so I wanted to talk about DAC. So I've had the opportunity. I have my my little list of of what we're talking points I was going about to say. <laughs> well so I'll tell you guys like I I was supposed to have a Garrard 301 because uh, SME who owns Garrard was going to crack Spona production is a little backed up. So I'm not getting a Garrard 301. I've always appreciated the 301 and 401 and the Thorns TD 124. And then to lesser degree, the Linkos, but the, the 301 is essentially like 
a blender motor. It's an AC motor. Mm -hmm. And the only way it defines speed is with a pulley. And the way you change speed, there's two ways you change speed. You move the pulley up or down till it hits a notch. Right. <laughs> and then it's got a magnet, what they call an eddy brake, which basically like has a plate on the on the shaft of the motor. And they apply electrical current to slope to the brake to actually physically like put more resistance against the the motor to push through. Oh, I didn't get to the I didn't get to the deck yet. But so the oh. punchline of all of this was that the Garrard 301s are really something pretty special that I've been messing with because they're really mechanical. Mm -hmm. That said, I've had really nice stacks as of late, like really, really, really stupid nice stacks. And my Garrard sounded better. Now I've taken sort of a step back and gone, well, how do I do this different that feels more authentic to me? The shit Yigi is still like, the, the standard setter for like a thinking man's choice for a DAC, in my opinion, mm -hmm. a hundred percent is like the shit you use. It is a wonderful choice for lots of people. And that, but I, gotcha. I agree. Like, I think the Yiggy is like in game for most people, you know, it's, it is like, I dig it. Cause it reminds me of a company called proceed, mm -hmm. which came from a company called Madrigal labs. Look it up. Lots of cool stuff about them. Um, and people will still use Proceed DAX, just like people still use uh, Denon and Sony CD players from like 1980s and 1990s that weighed like 40 pounds. They were like huge um, because like the, their DAC modules are like people are coming back in the flavor of using the, the PlayStation 1s. Mm -hmm. Actually, those things were badass. The PlayStation 1s for like their what they had in them, mm -hmm. like pretty ridiculous. That's people are hot rodding them again. Making my like pure like CD player DAC like that's crazy. Yeah, they did. They did have a because that's what they did with the PlayStation One. They put them in. They put all their technology for CD players into it. That's right. Yep. I remember that. Yeah, that's crazy. But so the two DACs I've really been, you know, turned on about is one uh, R to R DACs that are with a tube output stage because who doesn't like tubes? <laughs> So the standard bearer for that is like Audio Note. Audio Note's been doing that for 25 years, 20 years. That's spun off a whole separate line of very, very similar with different levels of execution thinking, which is like SW1X, Audio Note Kit. There are a few others that that, that are using non-oversampling DACs or R to R DACs and two two output stages. And I think they're all like really interesting, good ideas. So Somehow I got linked back to looking at Audio Note Kit. Audio Note Kit used to be really popular in like the 90s, 2000s. They just got on Instagram like eight months ago or something. And so I think somehow they just got back and they got on my feed because of it. And they used to do like full on tube kit uh, for tube amps and for tube DAX. Uh, and they're a really well regarded company. And it reminded me of a different DAC company. You know, it reminded me of Audio Notes, but it was really accessible. And mm -hmm. so the audio, I I bought two of their DACs. They're coming. I'm waiting to have them come in. Uh, the one I bought was the Audio Note Kit 1.1. Yep. And then I bought a 4.1. Oh, see, I have the 1.1 pulled up on my uh, little notes. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's my phone. Um, yeah, the thing looks dope. I like it. Or no, maybe, or did I get a, I don't remember if it's a 4.1 or a 2.1. It doesn't matter. I can tell you the major differences in my mind, but the DAC module between like least expensive to most expensive is actually still the same DAC. Oh, wow. So it uses, it's just, you're getting different parts to get the level up. Different power supply, mm -hmm. uh, tube output stage, or tra I'm sorry, transformer output stage versus not transformer output stage. Okay. Right, those are like the major, the two major differences. So they still use uh, transformers for what they call their IVR conversion. Okay, but I think the those transformers are still the same transformers for from least expensive to most expensive. So the DAC module and and the voltage converting transformers are the same. The main differences are like output stage and power supply. Okay, and the one point one I'm going to be taking to CanJam SoCal. And it's, it's a total hot rod of a DAC, and it's reasonably small. 
Yeah, it doesn't look yeah, like that. It's like a huge thing. It looks nice. The inside looks really clean too. Twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, it's not bad. Arch Which I mean, I, I know that like that's a hard like like everybody's got different economics, and so we have like two different choices to look at. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. Tyler will tell you, I, I'm giving you two solid, <laughs> very different ideas that are yeah. both cool. Yeah. But like the one point one gives you USB and SPDIF. Mm-hmm. And it's got a tube power supply and it's got a tube output stage. Yeah. And it's, it uses circuit boards, but they're like hand wired between them. Yeah. They're super, like nothing surface stuff. mount. Yeah. That's what it looks like. That thing is a monster. That is like super cool. Mm-hmm. No, they're really clean looking. Yeah. And if you can build a bottle head, you can build, the, uh, if you can build a bottle head, uh, you can build that, you know, you can build that. Their documentation is like, exceptional. I wanted to go back to do a style of conversion, which was not me chasing total bandwidth, but me chasing perhaps tonality and understandability. So, you know, I something to look at is the AMK tube decks. I think that they're incredibly good. And if you're heard of Bifrost and love the Bifrost and want to know if you should get a Yiggy or you have a Bifrost but want something different going to a, a tube R to R. It's not just R to R, but it's a tube R to R is a wonderful pivot point. And it's a completely different direction and it's not where the mainstream is. <laughs> so the other choice though, I totally like left field choice is the uh, WIM, W-I-I-W-I-I-M Pro. Pro. So like, mm-hmm. if you guys all know like the blue sound, and I think that the Blue Sound, I own one. They're, they're great DAX. What I like about the Blue Sound, Blue Sound nodes, is it has a linear power supply, um, and it's got Ethernet in, and you know, RCA's is takes SPDIF in too, and it does a really good job. And I mean, the reason why you want SPDIF in is so that you take your TV and you bleed your video off of your TV using SPDIF because HDMI won't do it, and that way you don't need a surround sound receiver. Right. Um, yeah. And, it, and I'm sorry, I'm reading the, the WIM Pro Plus is, I think, what it was. But look, I mean, you can see it on top of that amp. There's a little black box. And uh, it's, guys, wait. Oh, yeah, here we go. There you go. Yeah, he's got it right there. Saying, yeah. <laughs> it's like an Apple TV. It looks like an Apple TV. Uh, right. But here's what, what's super cool Ethernet in, Bluetooth, Wi Fi in, and RCA is in. So you can actually use it and buy like an inexpensive project debut turntable and hook up a turntable and it's got a subwoofer out if i remember yeah it's got subwoofer out two opticals in but like ethernet in and so it uses it can use spotify it can use title apple music um airplay natively like the newest airplay natively as well 179 dollars yeah i think if you go for like the top of the line one it's like 220 220 to two, yeah 220 i think and then for like right. the one the pro not the pro plus it's like 200 and then for like the baseline one it's yeah like 170 160 you know whether you want to call this your primary DAC or not it's got crazy good signal to noise ratio you can like asr folks kind of like look at it you know and like think about like how, how it measures but it's got a really really good app on your phone and so you can like sit in your listening position have the tv put to spit to spit it put put the amp, put the DAC on spit if mode and it will measure the time delay in audio like giving you a test signal and it will adjust the time delay so that the cool. so that the lips and, and the sound are synced which is nice because that's that is a problem with a lot it's of kind of like multi-band eq and all this other stuff but like it's a rune endpoint for 180 bucks and yeah, and like at the end of the day, like right there, it's got it's basically everything in the kitchen sink for this small little do all. Right. And I mean, I built Raspberry Pis that did less than this and cost more. And I mean, that, nothing wrong with it. I'm just, you know, like this. So, like when I'm breaking an amp in, I have one of these mm-hmm. and I, um, I have it connected to my house's Wi Fi, hook up to my Rune server, and then I just pipe music to it while the amps are breaking in. <laughs> You didn't forget about it. No, don't worry about it. Right, because it just will keep on playing. Obviously, this doesn't answer the question about tonality, right? Mm-hmm. But it gives me a really reliable entry point. 
and it's got the ESS deck in it, which is like because the AKM mm-hmm. had that factory fire, so the AKM has been having a hard time getting stock up to be in most of the new products. So here's I want to touch on that real quick because I'm not a big ESS fan, and it's not mm-hmm. because ESS chips are bad. It's because a lot of times to get them to work to my personal preferences, you have to put more effort into dialing in the DAC chip itself to, to make a sound. But if you just like, so from my understanding, if you just plop the DAC chip in it, the house sound of ESS is a little bit on, it leans a little bit on the brighter side or uh, it leans more towards <laughs> like high detail, high bright, like not brightness, but like, yeah, brightness, but it's brighter. Well, leans- I, I don't, I mean, I can only speak for, to my limited understanding. So I can give you a little bit of market understanding. ESS will send you a dev kit for a fixed amount of money. When you sign up for their dev program, they will actually like give program their internal programmers time with you as a company to work on the filters mm-hmm. or on the the use of different aspects of the chip. Depending on how lazy or cheap you are in your development, because if they implement it, you don't have to use it. And you may decide like, hey, this doesn't make sense for our, our consumer or this will poach customers from a different product that we're trying to focus on. Yeah. Or I don't want to spend extra on the license maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, or I need to do this versus that internally and I can't do this decision because it's too expensive. Or we're lazy and cheap and we rebrand shit because we buy it from platform companies rather than develop it ourselves. And as such, even though ESS would give us programmers to actually very, very intimately Mm -hmm. modify their platform to have a unique sound for each company that's putting a, a chip that uses them, very few companies are willing to put the engineering horsepower Mm -hmm. behind using their chips agree yeah because I've, I've heard ess that are like fantastic like that i've actually really mm-hmm. enjoyed like but there's a big chunk of that market that's just like we just said they just don't put the effort in it seems like it's more like off the shelf just pop it in there and well i mean i so sam rosen who's a reviewer and a friend of mine said something that i, I i'm gonna butcher how he said it but i think he, he explained it in a way that made sense to me like a relic which is a company i like mm-hmm. uses an ess chip Mm-hmm. Um, but they really only use it as the Delta Sigma function of the ESS chip. They turn off every other aspect of the chip and they put in their own like caching and their own uh, management software and they do all these other things. So all they're using it for is like the quantitative Delta right. Sigma conversion for which the chip does really, really well. Mm-hmm. And and that's how a relic gets like their house sound is by turning everything off. But but the, the, like the one thing that they want in the chip, other companies are like the ESSs are like little microprocessor. Like it's like buying an the NVIDIA piece. AI card. Yeah, it can do piece. a lot. Yeah, like, it do. like it can do sort of magic conversion internally before you even knew it did conversion. It can do, but yeah. you have to know what you're doing. Yes, and you have to like have bought the dev kit, understood the dev kit, hired people that understood the dev kit, and then worked within the dev kit system and felt like you were going to get a return on that. Yeah. Um, well, that is that too, right? Like you have to get your worth out of all that R&D and that kind of stuff, right? I'm not a DAC maker. That's why I think the R to R's are pretty pretty whiz-bang and super cool. Agreed. But I will say like this is an incredibly yeah. – like the Blue Note sound was revolutionary. Mm-hmm. Five years ago, three years, four years ago, right? And all the things they would do. This is a competition evolution of that. Yes. Less clunky UI, less Mm -hmm. clunky software, faster software, more updated ecosystem. Like if you guys had a sweet needed speaker amp, you know, Wim makes like a $300 version of this with a volume pod on it where it goes Ethernet in. Because all these things in in, on the back in Mm -hmm. and a set of speaker binding posts. Oh, is use class D? Is it like a class D thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You might think about doing a review on the whims. It's, 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 a, th- it's th- an th- amazing th- system. Cast back there, yeah. Right. Ethernet in, and you're done. Ethernet's the bane of my existence here in this house, man. But uh, like, so I'm running this giant cable from like all through my house to get Ethernet into this room. <laughs> it's like I have, I have like a hundred feet of cable, Ethernet cable that I'm running. I don't know if I can get this to show, but like. I'm just running big ass. Either. Cat 7. Cat, Looks like some Cat 7 yeah. cable. Mm-hmm. 
big thick cable just running through the house that's that's my bane for like testing that stuff but i'll do it and i i'll you know to get the testing on it but and also just I'm, i don't have like i've realized like i have like a lot of flack files i have a lot of stuff but i always end up just using cobas which is weird but that mm -hmm. works for the whim because you can just plug cobas right in good to go so actually i think it does mqa too now didn't mqa die isn't that dying got res resurrected oh yeah that sucks uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, look, it does something's interesting, right? Like, that's I'm, I'm being a jerk. Does it sound? Does it sound better? <laughs> does it sound good? I like Unless it was purple that, on the iFi stuff. It'd be turned purple. A little dot would turn purple when it was doing MQ. Well, I mean, like, what's crazy though is like, you know, we've gone to shows and guys will show up with like a terabyte or two terabytes, you know, strapped like a, a DAP. The, and the DAP is like a like a, a phablet. Can I plug this in? <laughs> like, what? What is that? No, I'm not even knocking it. And then they'll have like a Ray Samuels amp mm -hmm. for doing the am amplification. It's like, dude, you have the most portable, full, separate system I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, with like, and they have all the special cable. Yeah, dude, I saw dude they had that in his backpack. I remember one of the can gems I went to, and there's this kid, and he was rocking this backpack, and his like the backpack was obviously loaded because it was like just, and he was just like straining, like walking through the hand jam and he pulls out like not sr one a's but the other ones the ones that went on your head and had the flaps i mean it wasn't sr one a's but it was the uh no he pulls those out and he has so he has this portable amp in his backpack with this cable for these like stupid hard to drive <laughs> it's just like rocking you're like oh, that's happening right now but yeah i mean that right but people do that that's the thing and it, it, more power to him. You know? There's also that meme on on the internet that one one dude with the mohawk and he's got that what you just described like the massive, and he's got he's rocking grottos. <laughs> well, so there's um we both know that there's a guy his name is escaping me. So if anybody messages me, but there's a guy in like the Inland Empire near in Southern California that's doing uh kind of ripping off of, like the OHA speakers, but he does what his specialty seems to be is that he does custom ear cups for for grottos and he like builds fully custom grottos for people oh uh, i know you're talking about he has like the cool wood special woods uh -huh. oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 like giving very serious consideration building a pack because like because you can actually order like a, a different mm -hmm. to slam into them oh you're speaking my buddy jay's language he's a grotto fiend they're a thing like mm -hmm. they're a real thing sure i hit oh guys i want to tell you so a few different a few different little like sort of budget audiophile things. So the Dynaco definitely is like the amp of choice, in my opinion. The audio note DAC totally, or the audio note kit DAC at mm -hmm. 1200 bucks for a tube R to R DAC. Yeah. That's the like bonkers. Those two for the Pro. Yeah. Rice wise. Um, I don't, uh, Tyler will show it to you guys, or Tyler will like link it, but there's this mm -hmm. company called uh, Tokyo Soundproof Vibration Control Turntable Mat. Um, if you get on eBay, they're like $60, $70. If you buy it somewhere else, they're like $300 for this mat. So here's the thing. Like if you, you know how most platters are essentially bells, mm -hmm. bell shaped and you whack it real good. You'll, you put this platter on it and you mm -hmm. whack it even harder and it does nothing. Huh. It's it absorbs happening. 100%. Like this goes, bing, and mm -hmm. then you put the mat on it and just completely nothing. deadens the sound. And so... If you have a turntable with a metal platter, mm -hmm. it's the right answer. It's the one. And we'll we'll make your backgrounds infinitely quieter and less clicks and pops. Anything out of Japan, usually when it comes, especially the turntables, is like next level. Um, the other audio file, because we're going to scale up an idea in just a second. Antec, I used to build preamps from these chassis uh, from a company called Antec. Mm -hmm. And Antec... Got it in there. They had a fire at one point in the, their manufacturing facility, so they stopped making chassis as much. But they always sold off the Torio power transformers. They were really well known for this. Antec sells a power conditioner, pre-wired even. Or maybe it's not pre-wired, but they, they tell you where to put the wires. I mean, like they set you up to do this correctly, right? $250, you get an 8-amp power transformer or 8-amp power conditioner. An 8-amp power conditioner is enough power conditioning for almost anybody's system, 250 bucks. So if you think like any thousand dollar conditioning, maybe even as much as $2,000 conditioner, this uh, one KV Antec balanced power conditioner, I'll explain what that is in a second, 
for 250 bucks is stupid good. You get that on eBay. So balance power, basically you take 120 volts in on the hot, the transformer splits it into two 60 volt rails. And then when it goes back to the receptacle, both now the neutral and hot are hot are carrying power. And so when it hits the plug or hits the inlet to the power device, it goes back together again, cancels out all sorts of noise, makes all sorts of tube amps quieter, makes almost all equipment quieter, all the good and none the bad, $250. It's not bad. That's like, not bad. It's like stupid good. And then there's a thing called a common mode filter. Mm -hmm. So if you search common mode filters, so like you can buy a power conditioner. The cheapest, best power conditioner you can buy yourself is the Emotiva EC, EC2. Maybe? That thing's massive too, isn't it? Well, it, it's like a long strip, but you don't want the one with six. You don't want the one with six outlets. The one with six outlets has like surge suppression and some caps. The one you want is the two outlet version. It's still just as long, but it's only two outlets because it has a common mode filter and it does DC offset. Yeah, okay. The DC offset is super important for like solid state equipment and tube equipment too, but like solid state equipment really loves it. So it's like 150 bucks or so. It's an amazingly good, you can even use that in combination with the $250 balance conditioner. So you put the DC offset one from Emotiva first and then the, the, the balance conditioner after. You'll have the equivalent power conditioning of at least a two thousand dollar conditioner, if not more, for about four hundred bucks. Some of the very best power transform power conditioners do that. So I have a friend named Terry Terry Marshall, quite famous in the uh, audio recording industry. Uh, he loves Alpec Pixel Fours. Terry uh, it comes from a very famous mixing studio and mastering studio. He has made his own line of power conditioners. Uh, his power conditioner, I'm going to show it to you is in of the industrial vein so it's the kind of idea that you would put it either in the corner of your room and then you'd run like a strip like a emotiva six outlet unit so you'd run this big power conditioner right next to your wall outlet and then you run like a six foot cord to your emotiva six out uh, six outlet strip that has the common mode filter in it and that's all the power conditioning you need so terry's conditioner is essentially like that the antec unit mm -hmm. But instead of the Antec unit is a one kV, is is a five or seven kV. It's like it's huge. Yeah. And uh, Tyler saw me try to carry this thing. <laughs> Again, I mean, like I can bench about 180 pounds, 200 pounds, generally no problem. This thing is difficult. Justin likes it, big things. I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> I'm right. Tyler and I were lamenting like this. The the, the this thing has. Like it has wheels. For, for, so, someone, someone was more stupid than I when building something and my, of a my size. First comment was, "Are they from Texas?" And just, just like actually, yes. <laughs> no, he's such a sweet, nice man and smartest. Get out. So I'm going to show it to you guys. I'm going to have to bear hug it. It does not <laughs> pick up. Amazing. It has it has industrial casters. Mm -hmm. If that gives you an idea, it has, it has wheels for a reason, Justin. <laughs> it does. So, but if you think about like the Emotiva two outlet um, power strip, amazing thing. The Antec one KV unit for 250 bucks, super amazing. Again, that's the size thing. Terry would tell you that the bigger the conditioner's power they can take, the better off it is, the quieter it is. I think he's probably right about that for sure. Uh, so he, he, he you. follows the Justin philosophy. Yeah, I mean, I think he beat me. <laughs> big, pretty big. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can do big, this. Bigger, bigger is better, as they as the they say, right? The bigger is better. Don't die on us here. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I was gonna so, maybe just put it just in the building. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Look at that. Everybody, really, I'm gonna spin this around a little so no one laughs at me too hard. But yeah, can you see that uh, well enough? Just, yeah, yeah, it looks good. Just dense. It's just this. <laughs> I hit box, man. Wow. Oh, it's fully potted. So <laughs> like there's no moving parts inside, nothing wiggles or jiggles. Mm -hmm. It makes everything like stupid quiet, actively quiet. Like I tell people that if you need pixie dust to fix your power problems, it's a PCS audio PS audio power plant. Because mm -hmm. it's it's the only thing that it's the only place I know where fairy dust exists. 
this might be like number two. This is sort of like this is like a special water, the helix. So you know, like where where the water uh, of life. <laughs> you know where PS Audio is the pixie dust that that like Snow White and Enchantment. Yeah, yeah. For for power conditioning. <laughs> this is like the water from the Water Boy, that when she restores them with the water from the Himalayas or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, I know exactly. <gasps> That's the catch. Oh my god, dude! Like that thing's so it's like kettlebell, like heavy, right? Like it's one of those things where it's like surprisingly heavy for the yes. So it's surprisingly heavy, and yes, it weighs like sixty or seventy pounds or and more. This, and this, and this thing that you're just like, uh. <laughs> uh, one foot by ten inches by ten inches or something. Yeah, so that's a very like that's not a massive box. Like that's a. But it's heavy as all get. <laughs> yeah, kettlebell. So it, it, it came in like this, looked like medical supplies, but it had come along straps around the top of it and encased in foam. <laughs> so it couldn't be like, couldn't undo it. It's out of the box, yeah. The only other thing I was going to mention to you guys, because I, I kind of wanted just to end it on a high note, was aside from, look, I, I hope everybody will come to Axpona. Mm-hmm. If you don't come to Axpona, I hope you'll come to Kanjam or SoCal. It's always fun to see people. It's fun to be part of the community. I found the coolest rack. Um, in fact, I'll show you guys this rack because now you can see the red October compared to like my personal or the the, the red o- the XL versus my personal. But I found this company called Butcher Block Acoustics at Expona. Okay. And they make these fantastic racks that are made by Amish. <laughs> can't beat the Amish, man. <laughs> you can't. No, you can't. So, you know, th- these are the kinds of fun things that you'll see at Expona. You know, you never know what you're going to see. Yeah. And there's so many rooms too. Hundred thousand dollar cheap band. That's right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and the crazy speaker. Let's see if I can do this. All right. Oh wow. So that's a red October, mm-hmm. and this is the. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, sorry if I'm not doing this well enough. Oh, yeah. Right. You guys see the rack? Mm-hmm. Yep, looks good. I love that rack. That's a that's, that's a, a nice cool rack. rack. The fact so that it's that holding be, all those amps, that, and I know how much all those weigh. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, that's impressive. So that's a Red October. Mm-hmm. That's the XL. <laughs> yeah, that's a beast. Yeah, a little different. <laughs> so I was going to have us end on a high note of just like some music. So I got one album for you, man. I was hoping you were going to give me one album. You want to go first or me? I grew actually up. got a bunch of albums, but there's one in particular. I've been oh, with. that's super cool. You have to have links them so I can buy them. I'm a huge Bruce, Bruce Springsteen fan, and there, he did a You're Frozen Again, I think. Nope, nope. We're good. Oh, no, no, you just stand just very still. <laughs> my, my ninja um, training kicked in. <laughs> so I grew up listening to Pete Seeger and a lot of like folk music. Like because mm-hmm. that's the time of my parents, so it was like Motown and like folk. Oh yeah, that was kind of my 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 the my staples. That's the kind of stuff. Yeah. So I've always I grew up listening to Pete Seeger, and I found out that Bruce Springsteen covered Pete Seeger. And <laughs> Justin's mind went. <laughs> I mean, I think I've heard the album like more than twenty times. At this point, <laughs> so it's been on. Just, no, it's okay. it's, yeah, no, I was getting it. That, that's usually that's a, that means you've been just digging the hell out of it. Well, so there's a track, Old Dan Tucker, mm-hmm. and she listened to it. Like Old Dan Tucker is a great track. Okay, yeah, I have it on my phone. I have it like because you linked it, so I have it on my phone. I'll be listening to it. Yeah, so that that's my like you know because I always like sort of things that you can find a story from, like that there's mm-hmm. some interesting pull to them. Agreed. All right, so what's yours? Well. I found this guy. Michael Jackson beat it. <laughs> it's so it's so it's this guy L L Michaels affair or is that right? Uh, yeah, affair. And so he does like covers, but they're like very. So this is Wu Tang, right? Into the thirty seven mm-hmm. chambers, so Wu Tang thing. There's no singing. It's all like he does. He like converts it into like jazz, funk, blues. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, <laughs> it's so banana. He has a ton of albums. I actually ordered like two other albums of his and like it's just it's just good like it's just really good like jazz like funk uh bluesy music right 
So I've been really digging on not and I, I liked it so much that I ended up buying a couple of the albums on vinyl because and so if something about me is I think you did this recently too, where it's like I only buy vinyl if it's highly recommended, one, or mostly if I can listen to the whole album. And then that's what I'll, that's what I'll try and buy. So like I have a couple albums I'll probably end up getting rid of because I can't I only have a couple tracks on them that I like. And so I'm, I'm trying to keep my album collection you know, on vinyl, at least to the stuff that I actually want to listen to. And so that's, you know, and I all of it's just so good with this one. But yeah, I'm sort of like a uh, a one shelf rule. I used to have like a one shelf and then I'd have like a magazine stand. Like, mm-hmm. you know, this old foldable magazine yeah, yeah. stand. So the foldable magazine stand would hold like 20 albums. And that's like the stuff I'm like playing like on heavy rotation or like new, newly discovered. But for it to be on the shelf, my shelf holds like 150 records, maybe 200, somewhere like that. I have to play it. If I don't play it, it gets given away. Yeah. Because I, I do something super sacrilegious. People really hate me for this. I actually like people hate this idea is I remove the inner sleeve and the, all the album art, you know, the lyrics and stuff out of it. I throw it away. And I put in, and I get like a MoFi polyethylene sleeve, like the plastic sleeve. I do the paper ones too. The paper ones break down. Yeah. I, I do the higher, I do the MoFi sleeves as well. Yeah. Right. So my records are meant to be played. I don't need the goddamn um, lyrics. I, I keep all that stuff. The weirdo that collects stuff, but yeah. no, most people, most people do. I get it. This is why people like aren't happy with me about this decision. You're but lowering the value of your records, man. <laughs> you're right. I am. They have zero value other than to me. It's also fair. They're your albums at the end of the day. But I give them like if I don't play them, they get, get things will get given away. Yeah, that's fair. That's and that's kind of where. I'm at right now where I'm just kind of I'm really a, like focusing. So I remember I used to have a bunch of them, a bunch of albums back in the day. And I remember just getting rid of them, like just not even think because I wasn't like way into audio file back then. It was more just I listened to music. Right. It wasn't a um, thing. And then, God, I want to say like three or four years ago, I started getting back into vinyl. And that's when I was like, OK. And I started just really focusing in. I think I'm only at like. Maybe like just like 50 or 60 albums at this point, so. I'm with you though, man. Like I think if I, because I mostly listen off streaming stuff or my FLAC files. So it's for me to put an album on my record player, it's like I'm dedicating to that time and I want it to be something I actually want to listen to. So makes sense. Yep. Yeah. So that, yeah. So, so that stuff. And then, oh, I also joined VMP randomly because there was a couple albums I wanted and then I just haven't stopped. And then, <laughs> so, the, so that's, that's start, like Columbia House. I, yeah. Vinyl me, please. And so like they do. They do good stuff, but it's like it is like a subscription thing. And so I started doing that and mostly because there's a couple albums that I wanted from them. And to get the better deal, you had to become a member and then you get the free out. You're not you're not free. You paid for it. But like you get the first one you want. You can just do it. So it just made sense to be a member. But I'm doing that for now and actually got a hell of a deal. I just got a bunch of records um, from them for they had this deal it was like a 50 percent off deal but then they had like another 25 percent off valentine's code so i got like so i got like seven albums for like less than 100 bucks of like high quality vinyl records that i've been like oh i, I need those i want those albums you know like they're like mm-hmm. uh, nina simone sings the blues and like you know classics that i actually truly enjoy that i grew up like listening to with my dad and stuff like that but yeah that's kind of where i'm at with vinyl as well like so uh, keeping it simple keeping it where it's just things that i want to listen to. makes total sense very cool what's your table right now uh, i just have the what's well, underneath the zima handkerchief but it's uh just a fluence rt85 and i have like the so th- that prop does that have a metal platter no i have the uh no, the acrylic acrylic thank you i have the acrylic platter with That's the blue i have the blue ortofon um needle on there i think i think it's blue ortofon i think it's mm-hmm. Two M bra- two M blue, mm-hmm. yes, yes, that's the one. Um, yes, and it, but I'm I'm looking at other stuff. Like I really want to start because like, that was like my entry table to get back into vinyl, and that was like highly recommended at the time for like an entry level one. But I'm looking at you know I want something a little more fun, a little more unique. Like we talked about before, man. I want something that I want to be compelled to use. I want you know what I mean. I want to look at it and be like I want to use. Well, it. I mean so. the the Garage three hundred ones are super compelling because they. There's no electronics on it. Yeah, I was looking at them. I was actually I, I had them on my uh, 
I pulled up the wrong thing, but I have them on my 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 little list. Or so our little chat and stuff, you know, I have them all in here. Here's how you build the 301 from my perspective. Considering that I have two in the workshop at the moment and I have two that are done, I might might know a thing. You buy a 301 on eBay, the motor, mm -hmm. for between $1,500 and $2,000. That's what it runs. Mm -hmm. It's from like 1955, 1957 to 1970, 80. And it's going to need to be restored or you're going to need to restore it with some elbow grease. And the elbow grease is pretty straightforward. Like there's a company in, there's a few companies in England, like the, the lots of the parts are held together with springs. Mm -hmm. The springs can be replaced. They're not expensive and they're not, if you've yeah. ever taken apart a carburetor and changed the jet on a carburetor. Yeah. <laughs> It's about that complicated. Yeah. It's so easy, you, but definitely not hard. <laughs> well, like if you've ever removed a spring, you know, and how do you put a spring back to breaking? <laughs> tensioner. Yeah, right. a good tensioner. Well, for the heavy duty stuff, but yeah. And then the, there's a bearing, and the bearing mm -hmm. you take apart, you clean, you re grease, and you put it back together. Mm -hmm. And then the next questions are sort of like the speed is controlled by a pulley or the brake. And mm -hmm. so if the pulley's the wrong speed, there are companies that sell different sized pulleys to make the speed more correct. <laughs> so you, you can get way in the weeds. So what you're saying is it's another audiophile rabbit hole. They like go well, find two. So the, 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 the short version is like you can take a, mo a motor, buy it, and fix it up yourself like a VW Beetle. Mm -hmm. And then you put it into a plinth that you can either make yourself or buy. Mm -hmm. And then you get a tone arm. And you can align it and drop it in. Most of the plants that you buy are set up for two sides with nine inch arms or, or 12 inch arms. Okay. If you're trying to control costs, you get a plant that is set up for a nine inch arm. There's a thousand different variations of used nine inch arms from like $150 to $10,000. As turned in, as, <laughs> as audio world goes, yeah. <laughs> right. And if you buy or lend, have someone lend you this thing called a Fiker gauge uh, alignment jig, you can figure out exactly how far away it needs to be to get the voice you put, put this at the tone arm in the in the right spot. Or like they have these, um, like if you buy a well known tone arm, there's companies on eBay that has these like little discs that go right on top of the platter, mm -hmm. and then it's like. Put the tone arm here, <laughs> and they've done all the math <laughs> for you. Yeah. So one of the one of the three hundred ones I built and restored came with a, a a brand new Gelco, and the Gelco came with like a ruler, mm -hmm. and it had a hole, an empty hole on one side for a pin, okay. like a safety pin on one side, and then a hole where the spindle goes. And the way you knew where to put the tone arm was you put is that you put a <laughs> hole where the spindle goes on the spindle. Uh -huh. You know, on the on the center yeah. of the of the platter, mm -hmm. and where the safety pin hole goes, you put a safety pin right through it, and that sets the distance, the pivot, the spindle distance correctly. Really, wow! Yeah, that's and that's cool. the center. That's the center hole for where the tone arm goes. And then, then it's lined up. Done. So I mean, this is a DIY thing, but like either look, SME is a, an amazing company. Mm -hmm. that builds amazing turntables yeah and they are worth every red cent that they charge for what they do the 301 from sme it's going to be thirty seven thousand dollars with an sme with the sme arm on it and it's going to be completely amazing mm -hmm. if you can't afford that but want to have a taste of it mm -hmm. buying the component parts like maybe maybe you can't afford all of what I've just said because it's you know like hey Justin that's three to five thousand dollars worth of parts. Mm -hmm. I'd say yeah, but you can afford fifteen hundred dollars worth of parts this year, and you can afford you know seven hundred dollars worth of a plinth next year, mm -hmm. and you can afford seven hundred dollars worth of a tone arm next year. Yeah, and you have end game. <laughs> right. This isn't. This isn't. I think. I think a project debut is everybody's high watermark for an entry-level turntable mm -hmm. and it, it is a wonderful piece of equipment i've owned one okay mm -hmm. that said i think that if you want something that is compelling even with the most the it beating out the most sophisticated DAC i'd ever owned and i mean i owned a thirty thousand dollar DAC 
Okay. It doesn't happen for free. It yeah. doesn't have to happen. It doesn't have to be prohibitively expensive, but like you can do it at level mm -hmm. with a little, like people turn VW Beetles into Porsche killers. So I'm just saying like, if you want that kind of value proposition, you know, like the DAC, the Antec audio note kit DAX is definitely a taste of that where you can just buy it pre-built. They have them as a kit or they have them pre-built. Yeah. Yeah. But if you want a turntable and you want truly bespoke old school idea, here's a truly old school idea that you can wrap your head around. You don't have to have an engineering degree or a computer science degree to service it. Yeah, you just kind of have to get the right parts, get the right things. Yeah. If you've ever laid tile, if you've ever built a cabinet, yeah, you can do this. That's most things. I mean, I have the bottlehead crack right down there like i've i've done that like you know that sucked i'm not the best at soldering though. like I, I i get frustrated easy and i it's not that i can't do it i get frustrated easy so that's my problem and then i'm like eh. and then i'll just let it sit for a year until i get back to it but like but yeah like if i can build that like anybody can build these things you know what i mean 100 <laughs> percent. and and there's a lot of value in doing it and a lot of pride of ownership and i yeah. think so much of what many of us are missing as an intangible is that pride of ownership. You were talking about it before. I don't know if we were talking about it in the video, but like there's a thing where the, you, like people just want to cycle gear or like there's there's no, not loyalty, that's not right, but like there is some of that. Like you have like the back in the day, there was like the, the NES versus Sega or Xbox versus PlayStation. There's, you know, like there's this pride and ownership of a thing where I think it's weird that a lot of people have lost that aspect of it for the audio it seems like not entirely but like there's definitely less i don't want to say loyalty because that's not not the right word but like <clears throat> but that's kind of where i'm going with it right like there's you know like i'm like i'm a big zmf guy like i i wear it on my sleeve there's not that as much anymore i've noticed like everyone's just like just it's more about the gear cycle than it is about actually just sitting and enjoying your what you mm -hmm. listen you, you know so and I wonder if that's like a humble brag thing, you know, like there's that, that bit of humble brag. Oh yeah, I got this thing now. Oh, I got this. Or you have to keep up with the Joneses or I don't know. I'm, well, I'm, I mean, I'll tell you like, it's, I want to fill a fart with shit too. Mm -hmm. um, but like my core stuff, I, I, I'm trying to fiddle less mm -hmm. and maybe I need to find other things to distract myself with, you know, but there's also a lot of honor in having something that is more enduring but that's part of it though right like that that maybe that's the part maybe it's because this other stuff hasn't been that enduring to people like they don't feel that it is enduring and so that's where you get the pieces that are the amp amps and sound type stuff sorry i have so i'm i'm usually when they're up here yelling it usually means it's time to go <laughs> but like uh, i don't know if anyone heard that but uh anyways um but like that, no, right? <laughs> the Hampson sound stuff, like there's maybe that's it, right? There's these bespoke, like the ZMF stuff, the the ETA guys, like the guy, people that put their passion into things, right? Like you, you, you know, that gives you more ownership in the sense that you know this was built for you, not for you specifically, but like hand built. This is built. This is you, like this is unique to you to some level, right? Like, um, so I think that's missing a little bit from. Well, that. you know, I mean. And I guess we'll, we'll close it down after this, but I'll say like, you know, it is harder to love things that are divorced of ownership. Yeah. And whether everybody loves me or Zach or Dan Clark, mm -hmm. everybody can point to Dan, Zach, or me and go, I know that asshole who built it mm -hmm. yeah, or conceived yeah. it or, or nurtured that idea. Mm-hmm. There's a soul, um, there's a passion behind it. There's a, there's a, there was a, a definitive this this decision making that went into that that was yours and or theirs or you know what I mean like there was like a definitive singular. Well, and it wasn't before. it wasn't you built by a committee. It to fix it. You built it. You built something for a solution that you wanted for your solution, and then you put it out to the world. Like that's cool. That's that's exactly the way it should be, right? Like, I don't know. You said it better. Yeah, than but like, that, but <laughs> that, that, well. Uh, Rick Rubin actually says something to the effect of like the greatest expression of love is art that you do only for you. And when you're done doing it for you, you extend it to others. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like death by committee is terrible. Painful, too. Yeah. You ever sat in <laughs> ever sat in a corporate meeting room? Oh, 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Make, making decisions about things. <laughs> Just do it already. <laughs> All right. You have family. I got dinner. Yeah, man, it's nice to catch up. Yeah, always, man. We do, and we, you're we gonna do Jam SoCal. I'm, I'm doing something? my best to do Can Jam SoCal. I'll be out of town for Expo. So Expo is a horrible one for me because it falls right on the wife's and I's anniversary and her birthday and some other people's. So it's like a horrible time frame for me. But uh, as far as like trying to go someplace, but SoCal, I'm gonna start putting the bug in the the wife's ear to let her know I'm I wanting to go again this year. So yeah, I'm gonna. I might. I'm planning. Tyler, on going Tyler to you have this beautiful elbow space right here next to my Johnny Walker, but you have this beautiful elbow space that might have ZMF in big letters. That's a hard one, man. The elbow is reason it's blank, but I mean, yeah. See, see, see. No, they have new cream. They have new numbing creams. No, oh no, not because it hurts, but just because it's like it's hard to take ink. But yeah, that's fair. I could, I got, I, I fill it in. I mean, I'll fill it in. No, no, we should talk. I got about my hands like, too, and I got my hands. I can, I can start working on my. No, hands. Oh, can't do the hands. Can't do the hands. Little next action. Yeah, I'm old. I'm retired. I can do what I want, man. No one gives a rat's ass about my. <laughs> Only the one. All right, but. Just everybody, we should have a poll thing. put it to, to Zach about you know bubbles. branding the <laughs> ZMF brand. <laughs> Fair enough, but yeah, man, we'll have to do this again. I, we keep saying, like, oh, we need to do these chats more. And um, I know this one's not a live stream, it was kind of intentional so we can kind of flesh this out a little bit and I want to play with it more. But uh, yeah, maybe we'll do some more down the road. And we keep saying it, but it's life. Well, we got one or two people that are missing that we need to bother because I'm telling you that your golden goose. Uh, paperweight. Um, we should send it to Marcello. <laughs> I think he has one. He might have one. <laughs> I think he, he might. Maybe I he think, has I one. Think, I think he did get one. Maybe too. only the special people get the get the golden goose. <laughs> um, uh, paperweight. It's, you it's, more an acoustic, it's an acoustic amplifier. <laughs> only when properly in service. Placed. Placed. It's, <laughs> on that note uh justin have a great dinner and uh <laughs> everyone go check out his booth at expona he's gonna have his whole lineup it's gonna be a, the amps and sound house sound so he's got some dope stuff there so go go check it out and uh, uh let let us know what you think and we'll catch everybody on the next one justin always a pleasure uh and uh i'll let you anything you want to say to say sayonara are you good to go you guys just listen to some good music have some fun fair enough all right well with that justin have a good one and uh we'll catch you everybody on the next one so cheers everybody thank you for joining See you, man. and bye-bye